What's going on, everybody? Robinson. <laughs> Very shoot another video. I know I'm a little bit behind. My biggest problem with, you know, getting content up is I feel like the fitness thing has been so overdone. Sometimes I try to figure out what my contribution to all this is. Um, and I struggle just to get material up. So, anyway, uh, something I want to talk about that's very pertinent to what I do or how I do it or clients that I come across, etc. Um, is that people's priorities or thought process, though well-intentioned, tend to be misguided or in the wrong direction. There's a lot of reasons for this. We do live in the world of instant gratification where everybody thinks something's going to happen overnight. Uh, you know, to train for a week to two weeks, maybe four weeks, you think that you're going to miraculously change your body. Um, that's a very naive thought. Uh, I'm sure most of us know that, but we try to pretend like it's not. The other problem is the sensationalism, extremism, that goes on in the fitness world. Uh, there are a lot of sharks out there, snakes out there, who do not have your best interests in mind. They're more worried about their pocket and what they can sell you. Uh, I'm not one of those guys, and that's probably why I'm not the most popular on social media. Uh, I don't try to take a contrarian or a contradicting opinion just for the sake of taking it. But I also don't view it, view a lot of this as black and white. So I try to talk about the pros and cons of every side. Uh, and the main thing I want to convey here is there's no such thing as being perfect. The main thing that's really important in achieving your fitness goals um, is consistency. And the one thing people lack is being consistent day in and day out. Um, and by consistent, once again, I don't mean perfect. I mean giving your best effort that you can. So if you have a training program, making sure if you have a four day, day, four day split, five day split, that you're actually executing it. Um, and then with your nutrition, I hate to say the word diet because it has such a negative connotation to it. Diet just I means people take as restriction and lack of flexibility and deprivation, which it's not. Um, but let's say your nutrition is day in, day out, being relatively consistent with your caloric intake. And of that caloric intake, what your macronutrients are. And obviously focusing on your micronutrients to make sure you're getting your vitamins, your minerals, your fiber, those type of things in. But it's day in and day out of doing that. And when you can do that for an extended period of time, that's when you'll see the best results. But what most people do is they're like, good for a little while and then they fall off and then good for a little while and they fall off and they yo-yo all over the place and I want everybody and I truly mean this like I don't think people understand this they look at me and they see a natural pro bodybuilder who's taking his physique more to the extreme of muscle hypertrophy um, and everybody's goals are different but like I don't think people understand when I say that I have a different goal in mind and, and my goal is to maximize my muscle hypertrophy and my muscle symmetry, right? I'm not concerned about how far I can run. I'm not concerned about running a, uh, you know, doing um, a Tough Mudder or even necessary functional things. Even though, I mean, I do compound lifts, but I'm not into all functional type of training. I'm specifically into how can I maximize muscle hypertrophy. That's what I care about. Um, I want to ma maximize muscle mass. I'm not concerned about overall functionality. Um, obviously, I want to make sure that my mobility and stuff is good, and I'll get to that. But I want to keep a certain amount of strength, and I want to maximize muscle hypertrophy. So how do I overload the muscle in a way to make it grow at all times? How do I maximize my nutrition to keep myself in a way that encourages anabolism? Um, all those type of things, right? So. My main goal is whether you want to drop 10 pounds, 50 pounds, 80 pounds, have some light abs all year round, whatever it is, how do we maximize that for you? Uh, I'm not, and I truly mean like, I want you to reach your fitness goal. I just don't want you to go these extreme 
things that you don't need to do. I have packed on a ton of muscle and I don't eat clean all the time. Clean, okay? In other words, whole foods. Um, I still like to have my normal, you know, run of the mill cookie here and there, pizza here and there. I just don't make it a staple of my diet. And I focus on, you know, getting my protein in, carbohydrates in, my fats in, all that kind of stuff. But I can still go out and enjoy other things with my family and I don't panic about it. I just don't abuse it. That's it. I don't go crazy. And I know my body well enough at this point. I know when I can splurge a little bit. And I know when I gotta, like, hey, let, let, let's curve it. You're getting too far off track here. Um, I'm not big on cardio. I don't like to do any of that stuff. I hate cardio. I don't really wanna do anything. Why is my camera tilting all of a sudden? There we go. Uh, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not an extremist like that. Like you can never have a cookie or food deprivation. However, for those of you who may have issues with a sweet tooth, um, a lot of which stems with from not getting enough whole foods to begin with, so there's a satiation issue there, you may need to remove or keep a very limited amount of those kind of foods around, and I understand that. I also have begun to understand, though I do not like meal plans. Um, I don't do it for my clients, I never will. I teach you how to fish, um, I want you to learn a life skill that you can use with me from now till the rest of your life, whether you're my client or not. I refuse to do the meal plan. But however, some people need that structure, at least in the beginning, until they can get into the groove, and then they kind of learn the skill. I get it, all right? But eating clean and meal plans in the long run is going to set you up for failure if you're not learning the skill. It's the same with anybody who's on Weight Watchers or Nutrisystem or any of these other things. If you're not learning the skill, eventually, without the program in front of you, you're gonna fail, right? So that's one thing. The other thing are the uh, the fad diets or the, the hot diets of the, the month of the year or whatever that's going on. So keto, for some reason, has come back as this incredible fat loss diet. It's not. It's, really, it's, it's merely a change of macronutrient distribution with the deprivation of one. Um, therefore, because you're in a caloric deficit, you lose weight. Nothing, nothing impressive. There's nothing miraculous about it. Um, you have paleo, which is more of a whole foods diet. You'll have all these things that come in. Atkins was a big one back in the day. Low carb diets, low fat diets, all these different things. All they are are deprivation of a macronutrient, therefore creating a caloric deficit, therefore creating weight loss. Um, and they kind of set you up for failure because if you think that you're gonna be able to maintain that lifestyle, I guarantee you 99% of you will not be able to keep that up. Um, and you're gonna go back to eventually your normal way of eating. You're gonna sock on a ton of body fat and actually your body composition in the long run is gonna be worse, guaranteed without a shadow of a doubt. That's, it's, it's scientific fact. Um, that the body composition gets worse over time for all the yo-yo dieting, okay? Then you have the other extreme where people focus on supplementation first. And the idea of a supplement is to fill in gaps, not to become the staple of what you need. Um, and we get too focused on what supplement to take, what works, what doesn't work, and we get too wrapped around that whether it's pre-workouts, whether it's creatine, whether it's testosterone boosters, whether it's what vitamins to take, um, herbs to take, whatever. People are getting way too wrapped around the supplement industry, mainly because of all the sensationalism and scientifically proven to work um, claims that are put out there, which are usually drastically, and I say 99%, drastically overstated. Uh, and we're focusing on the supplementation too much to get the result that we want. So we have to be aware of supplements are exactly that. They're meant to fill in nutritional gaps. Um, and the percent of return that you're getting on them is probably very, very small. So beware of that. The third is, and the final part that I want to talk about, are the optimal, optimal training protocols. Uh, people get too focused on whether they should CrossFit, whether they should do a more bodybuilding style, whether they should do full body splits, a body part a day split, um, two a days, 
how many rep schemes to do with, within all of that. And a lot of that's gonna be trial and error, and here's the reason why. If you like high intensity type lifting with cardiovascular activity, and that works for you, then something like CrossFit may work to an extent, right? I'm not gonna bash CrossFit. However, the claims of the CrossFit being this miraculous end all and be all, it's not. There's a high probability of injury, mainly due to poor training and Olympic, Olymp, Olympic lifting for cardiovascular activity is not, listen, I'm, I'm just gonna say it's not the smartest of ideas, okay? However, there are benefits to CrossFit? Absolutely. Um, the functionality of some of the stuff, the, the, the cardiovascular stuff, that, that's all great, but I'm concerned about doing high volume Olympic lifting with weights with bad form, okay? Because that's gonna result in injury guaranteed no matter what. Um, a lot of injuries that are happening in sport, especially are coming from CrossFit. Once again, not bashing CrossFit. I think they're incredible. The people who get to those elite levels are incredible athletes with their endurance and what they can do. Uh, I admire them. I just think it's extremely dangerous and a lot of those people are a genetic exception. And if they're not taking care of their bodies, um, like anybody else, it's gonna fall apart, okay? Um, I don't think focusing on high intensity interval training versus medium steady state cardio or long and steady state cardio is anything better. I think they're all different based on what you're looking to achieve, uh, based on what your current training split are, uh, is or are. They all have their, their pros and their cons, okay? Bodybuilding training is not for everybody because not everybody wants to be a bodybuilder. So not everybody wants to do, you know, um, high volume lifting. But if you want to focus on hypertrophy, you know that um, you're going to have to do a certain amount of reps and a certain amount of volume and you're going to have to progressively overload the muscle in order for the muscle to grow, right? My phone is about to fall. There we go. Because we've had this before. Ah, sorry, guys. Sometimes this phone wants to jiggle out of the holder, I apologize. Anyway, um, and my thing is frequency, overload, um, and volume and intensity are all the different things you're gonna need in order to challenge your body to grow. So the main thing you need to focus on is what is the purpose of your training protocol. And once you understand what that is, you build a program and of which at this point, there's plenty of research out there. You could literally copy and paste a lot of this stuff, but you could literally build a program to create the goals that you're looking to do. So if you're looking for a powerlifting, bodybuilding type blend, um, something like daily undulating would work very well, right? Something I use. Um, or a push-pull legs could work very, very well. If you're looking for strength-based, you could look at things like a linear progression a five by five, a five three one, um, or um, you got know, your West Side barbells and a couple of those guys out there, or your conjugate methods and things like that. So there's a lot of you know small obs things like that that will help you focus mainly on strength building. So it's a matter of what that is, and then understand that based on how you write those plans out, where you decide either taper and deload. Um, and, and progressively overload, it, it's all about how you're periodizing your training protocol to achieve what your goals are. And then over time, you will see that. Six months, eight months, a year, two years, three years. And that's how you will get there. You need to stop focusing on trying to figure out your nutrition, your supplementation, and your training protocol all at once. Um, it's a lot for anybody to handle. So my main thing would be Focus on what your goal is. Um, are you looking for something that's more cardiovascular and training? Or are you looking for muscle hypertrophy? Are you looking for hypertrophy and strength? Are you looking just for strength? Uh, and those goals could change over time, but nonetheless, you know, try to pick something and stick with it for a while. And then align your nutrition so that if you're trying to either recomp a little bit, drop body fat, or bulk, that your nutritional goals and your caloric intake as long with your macros are in line with that. And then the rest is gonna be patience and time. All right, guys, hope I didn't ramble too much. Talk to you later.